Can you hear me? I can. Hey, Nika, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good. Give me one second. I'm going to try to make it a little less noisy in here. I got a water fountain outside my door that I got to turn off. You can turn it off from your phone? Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's on a timer, so I turn it off at night. Is it like a like a decorative type fountain? Yeah, I got a little atrium in my house. Oh, and, that's cool. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can probably kind of see it out out there oh my gosh that's awesome oh i like yeah. the big skull on the ground yeah when priscilla moved in with me it uh it became like she had a lot of plants and i had a lot of plants we put them together and now we got this whole rainforest out there oh that's nice though okay now i just turned it off yeah because you're in california huh so you got pleasant weather pretty much all year long that would not survive here yeah it we can keep it pretty green in there all year round it's awesome. yeah it's nice is it a lot of work? Not really. Um, it's, it's definitely getting a little overgrown. I got a tree in there that's getting too big that I got to plant in my front yard soon. So, <laughs> but uh, it's no, nah, it's not a lot of work. Just watering a couple times a week. That's it. We got a couple. Well, what... fro we got frogs that live in there now too. Oh, that's fun. Did you guys put them in there, or did they just come in? No, they kind of came in on their own. At one point, we had three but i i know there's at least one in there and his name is elon um and then we had dolly for a while and then we had gonzo i think and, oh. but i only have seen one at a time so i'm not sure which one is which but elon was first so we just call that one elon and he's been oh, there for a, well like a year and a half gosh yeah that's cool that's mm -hmm. funny gonzo you you named him the not frog of the muppets <laughs> Hermit was too obvious. <laughs> a little creative there. That's funny. Uh, how's your day been? It's been good. Um, uh, just uh, always doing Verona stuff. It's pretty much consuming my life at the moment. Well, it's getting closer to release date. And last time we talked, you obviously already had it in the works and probably even done at that mo moment, but you did not let on at all. <laughs> I was I was like, oh, I hope you do in so sometime in the future. And you little did I know you already had it all completed. Yeah, I think. God, when was that? Like March or April ish. Okay. Yeah. So oh yeah, it was a hundred. It was completely it was done, mixed and mastered at that point. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. I was excited to see that that's what it was. Um, I was hoping that the countdown had to do with a musical project. And and I was um surprised thinking it was gonna be much more industrial, but there's only got like hints of of industrial parts in there. Yeah, except for the monarch acid test is probably and yeah, and I would say Red Dead Rose has got some fairly yeah. heavily in and but yeah, that's it. But um I've already started working on the second record and it, it's gonna be more industrial all the way yeah. through, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really I really like this one, obviously. I don't know, I don't know what what the future um holds as far as what it's gonna sound like, but this one I I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying to a point to where I think I might come out of review hiatus to to do a review on it. And I don't do those very often anymore because they take a lot of time. I I don't like to willy nilly my reviews. I put a lot of a lot of time and effort into them. Um, but I'm enjoying it that much. Thank um, you. It's really good. Yeah. So I didn't expect you to be doing the vocals, and you have like, I swear seven or eight different vocal styles in this you're all over and they all sound incredible which I don't know how you pull that off is that something that you've practiced and you knew you could do or did it just kind of as you were creating tried to figure out different things and some just worked some just worked and I just I did whatever felt it felt right in the song and that's actually one of the things that my mixing engineer commented on when I gave it to him. 
it uh, it kind of caught him by surprise a little bit because most of the records that he mixes, the singer sounds, you know, maybe has two to three different types of voices that they do throughout the record. And even when I've recorded bands, you know, like when I was recording Wednesday 13, we, he had like three different types of voices that he would go through that we named and, all right, do this voice here, do that voice there. But I just did whatever felt right for the song, you know, and I was a little concerned about that at first, you know, it being so different from song to song in, in some ways, but there's a lot of new bands out there that really mix things up a lot within yeah. a record, you know, like, uh, uh, like Ghost Main for ex existence, you know, and uh, a lot of stuff that I don't really listen to a lot, but it seems like, you know, the younger generation of 20 year olds are pretty not record like that. And I didn't do it on purpose. It's just the way that it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think anymore people's attention spans are so entirely short that you almost have to keep people on their toes and so in in that fashion it, it works plus it's a very fluid transition it, it's not it's not um like even though you do have different vocal songs for different songs you also have different vocal songs within the same songs and it and it works I mean it doesn't sound like it's it it doesn't sound like it's um it does sound like it's different vocalists but not in a in a choppy way you know like your harsh vocals I I don't know I don't know why I was surprised I don't know I just didn't expect all of those sounds to come out of you Thank I was you. I, I looked at the out or I looked at the information and I was like hey does he have like guest vocals? or is someone uh, nope it, it's pretty incredible no it's all me another thing that you know I I'm a big KMFDM fan and they've had so many different singers in that band but that's just what they've always done mm -hmm. and they mix things up they collaborate with different people so after a while of contemplating whether i should make it more consistent through the record or not i finally came to the conclusion that it's this is what sounds right for this particular part of this particular song and i'm just rolling with it i think you made the right choice i really do i think it's it it just works and it sounds incredible and it's really cool to see that you can do so many i mean we already know you're a talented guitarist but i just had i just had no idea i just had no idea how much talent you had hiding in there it's it's been really really cool to um experience on as a listener and then the imagery um tell me uh, it's so creative and and it it's it's all it, my son goes was watching it and he goes oh my gosh, I'll bet this would have freaked you guys out in the 90s. And I'm like, this is the 90s. This totally <laughs> is a 90s vibe of imagery. Tell me how you came up with it. Definitely stems from going back to my roots from when I was in high school. When I turned 15, I really, you know, I started discovering bands like Nine Inch Nails, Ministry, KMFDM, like the whole 90s industrial scene. And I know this is not, it's like you said, it's not really an industrial record. It just has a lot of industrial elements within there. Mm -hmm. But um, the, those are, that was the era that still to this day, I listen to the most. And I wasn't going for a 90s vibe when I, I just sit down and write, you know, mm -hmm. I don't. Sometimes I try to give myself a little bit direction when I sit down to start something. And sometimes I don't and just see what comes but as far as the the imagery as i was writing the record i didn't know what i was going to do was, you know i'll get the record done move on from there and my fiance priscilla found this sculptor that had this sculpture of a guy with that you know nails going across his his eyes and we took that gave it to my um art director jason Wan. A uh, very, very talented guy. He also did the logo and the symbol and the artwork. And he's actually working on the video for Monarch Acid Test right now. Awesome. And he did some mock-ups of the symbol, kind of picked it. And, you know, I knew I wanted... A... Part of the reason I went with Ver Verona on Venus is because it had the V-O-V in it. And I knew I could make a cool, nice, symmetrical symbol out of that. 
And that's yeah. another reason why I really liked the name and I stuck with it because I had a long list of names that was, oh, and I bet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard trying mm -hmm. to find a really good name that you're really going to like, and you're not going to, going to regret later. Mm -hmm. And so I passed on some, you know, that some artwork examples onto Jason and he, like, he came back with that cover and I don't think I asked him to make a single edit. And then when we, as we went on after the cover and we were going to do the rodent video, you know, I wanted to make that record cover come alive somehow. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking like, could I possibly get someone to put that on me and cover up my dreads and make me look bald and I didn't know that was you. That's you in there. A lot of people don't. I've been getting messages from fans, friends, even family members that are like, who is that in the with the nails in his head? And I'm like, uh, it's me. That's a trip. Yeah, so, I had no idea. Uh, some people know it's me. And that's part of the reason I left my lip ring in there is so to kind of give a little Easter egg that it was me because I had a feeling a lot of people weren't going to recognize me. Well, it's um, because you don't have the iconic hair, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you automatically don't yeah just you go out the window yeah that's so crazy my director vicente cordero uh i you know i sent him the cover and i was like you know i asked him do you know anybody that could make me look like this for real you know and uh, he turned me on to a very talented woman named Jennifer Corona that we went over to her house and she did the whole, you know, uh, the casting of me. And then when it came to sh time to shoot the video, she came over to my house and inserted all the nails, you know, or did the makeup first. And I'll never forget, even before she put the nails in, I, you know, I took a picture of myself and looked at it and I was just like, oh my God, this is going to turn out even better than I was expecting. And um, then she started putting the nails in. And I had luckily I was able to see through them fairly well because we did it at my house and we had to drive to the filming location. And I had Priscilla drive me in my truck and I just I didn't even want to sit in the passenger seat because it we're just going to it's daytime. And I don't know, it's just I could just see someone getting distracted. What is that? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I sat in the back where I was kind of hidden from with my tinted windows in the back, and uh, had that thing on for about seven hours that day. Yes. Was it heavy? No, no, not at all. It was actually much more comfortable than you would think. It wasn't that mm -hmm. bad, and you know. And then from there, um, you know, my fiance Priscilla came up with that whole dress idea that i'm wearing hmm. so um in the future is that do, first of all do you have a name for the character and are we going to be seeing you in that get up again you will be seeing me in that get up again um i don't want to say any more than that but okay, that's all right I've, I've got something up my sleeve and uh doesn't have a name no okay didn't give it a name Hmm. Maybe hmm. maybe the fans will eventually name it, and then I'll I'll pick one and roll with it. There you go. That's not a bad idea. That's actually not a bad idea, just for fan engagement. You know, people love to have be able to have a say in things that that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um. So I uh, had heard in another interview that you are planning on doing a tour with this. Um. When you get the band figured out of who's going to be playing the music and touring with you, um. And in this, and this might be what you're referring to, and I apologize if if you can't answer, you can't answer. But um, where will there be like a theatrical element to the live shows? Yeah, and before people get carried away, no, I will not be wearing the, okay. the that halo a lot of work every for, night for the whole show. No, but yeah, I um the the plan is to do some shows next year. I do have one member that is pretty concrete at this point. He was just at my house yesterday. We were going over the songs together. He's a fantastic guitar player. I will not be announcing the members until shortly before the tour or before the first show. I'm not sure if it's going to be a tour. I'm not sure if I'm just going to do a couple shows in the LA area. Um, I 
will probably be doing a few sporadic shows before I go out on tour to kind of get the band warmed up. So yeah, tentative plan is to do some in California, Arizona, Texas, and maybe New Mexico that, uh, um, those are pretty solid markets for metal these days. So, mm -hmm. um, sure. and they're all within fairly reasonable driving distance. So yeah, that's the tentative plan. Get the band warmed up, um, get some shows, um, under our belt, dust ourselves off, and then hopefully hit the road opening up for some other band. Awesome. So, um, there is a, a future plan here. It's not just, a. So, cause some, some, um, artists just release a solo album just to, they're like, J I just had it in there and I just needed to get it out. And then that's it. And then it's like, oh, come on. But this was, this is going to be an ongoing thing. It's going to be an ongoing thing. It's awesome. not just a side project. I mean, obviously devil driver is still a very big priority for me. We're already working on, on, we're in the writing process for another oh, record geez. right now. And, uh, it's been very exciting because I've got John Miller back in the band and, uh, I, we just, we just picked up right where we left off, but Verona on Venus, I will be doing for the rest of my life. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I already got him working on another, uh, another couple of songs and eventually we'll be releasing a full record. Uh, probably not until 2025, but I do plan on list, uh, releasing a couple more songs, um, as singles, mm -hmm. uh, next year after the record is released, but, um, I don't have any solid dates for that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Smart to do that. It keeps people um, reminded that you're there and what you're doing. You know, there's so many, so many artists out there anymore. Um, you got to keep people on their toes, man. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. So tell me, so you haven't done, as far as I know, I'm sure you probably have in the past, but not with Devil Driver. You don't do um, lyrical content. Tell me how that was that uh, different for you. Was that difficult for you, or did it did, did that come natural as well? It started out a little rough. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to write about. I had a few ideas when I started doing vocals. I actually did the Bones of Baby Dolls first mm. when I was doing the demoing process. That's a great cover because I wanted to. I figured let's get to singing before mm -hmm. we start writing mm -hmm. and just kind of baby step the process. I'm in a hurry and sidetrack. Were you nervous doing that song? Because obviously Dax is such a iconic vocalist and person and through, of course, the nineties. Um, was that a song that you were nervous to, to cover or was it pretty comfortable? I wasn't really nervous about doing it. Um, Dax is one of my favorite singers of all time and just an amazing lyricist mm -hmm. and yeah it's <laughs> I was I knew I couldn't sound like Dax I didn't want to sound like Dax but it kind of it, it gave me a good starting point and because I knew I wanted to sing and have some screaming parts in my music and that's pretty much what acid bath is about i've always loved that song and i don't think it's really gotten the attention it deserves mm -hmm. so i would like people to notice it even if they revert back to the original to go listen to it if they've heard if they had never heard the song before mm -hmm. because uh, you know the way dax sings on that song is just it's not even the best recording on earth Mm -hmm. but he really brings it alive. Mm -hmm. I've always loved that song. And uh, there was, there's no real reason why I picked it. You know, it was just something I was probably listening to in my car. I still listen to acid bass a lot. Um, it really reminds me of college. And when I met all the guys in devil driver, you know, which are some of my fondest memories. And uh, I just went with it. Yeah, a full circle song. So you started with um you started with that as kind of a, a warm-up for your for your vocals and to see what it was gonna sound like and be like. And then you transitioned into writing your own lyrics, obviously. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your inspiration from? Because your your lyrics are pretty dark, man. And they have this this uh was made me laugh because I had listened to the album quite a few times before 
I pinpointed this for some reason, and it must be like a subconscious thing, but if there's the word rain in a song, it's, I almost, I almost always am going to like it. And it has to be subconscious. Cause I didn't know that you were say, saying rain in a few of the songs. Um, but when I had looked at him, I was like, oh, that's, that's funny. No wonder I gravitated so hard towards some of these songs. Um, but yeah, where do you come up with the, the inspiration for the lyrics? Different areas, uh, past experience, experiences with, uh, not so happy experiences, not so happy people mm -hmm. that I've had to deal with. Um, Monarch Acid Test is not a real original subject, but I thought it was a good idea. It's about MK Ultra, the uh, CIA experiments that they did back in the, I believe in the 70s. Okay. Um, uh, there was a, a, it was, you know, they had MK Ultra, but then there was another um experiment they were doing that was basically under the mk ultra um umbrella, umbrella that uh was called project monarch and it's a long story that we won't get into but th that was the last song i wrote on the record and funny enough it was actually the easiest one to sing for me i got that done in one day yeah because and... that one is, is the one that you have the most harsh vocals isn't it if not yeah. all yeah it, yeah it gave me a newfound respect for singers that sing <laughs> because uh, I couldn't, like, like I said, I, it was one of the, no, I take it back. Rodent was the last one that I finished, but and I think Monarch Acid Test was the second to last because that song instrumentally, I, I, I uh, wasn't, uh, it was the last one that I finished. It, it started out much differently when I originally wrote the song and I rewrote it and pretty much made it into a brand new song. And then by the time I did that is when I did vocals and it's just done. Mm -hmm. But uh, the most yeah. natural maybe for you then. I mean, due to the harsh vocals and the industrial aspects, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, Dirty Cigarettes is about my 10 years of being on Adderall. Mm. And um, through that whole process, you know, we... Uh, we had a nickname for him called Dirt, and that's where that song came from. And yeah, I am very against that drug these days. Yeah, like I am very shocked that they uh, they give that stuff to kids. Yeah, and and I was one of them, and no more. Even mm -hmm. the thought of it makes me nauseous now. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I get my inspiration from all different types of places. You know what? That's interesting um, that you, I mean, just having the the story that obviously um, still continues to mean a lot to you from the dirty cigarettes. That one is the one that stuck out to me initially the first time. Um, and you can hear the sincerity. Is that the right word? and the rawness in your vocals in that one like it seems it seems like a very personal song so that that doesn't surprise me it was personal um you know it's it's not about regret mm -hmm. but it's um you know it just you take something for that long and it kind of changes you you know, sure. I think it kind of rewires your brain a little bit. And 100%, yeah. I, I used to be under the impression that, oh, a doctor gave it to me. It must be OK. And I don't feel like that anymore. It's I think it's a really nasty drug. I don't think kids should be taking it unless it's under extreme cases. And I think they hand it out like candy too often. I mean, it was so easy for me to get. Uh, and um, it turns on you just like all drugs mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And eventually I, one day I was just, you know, it was making me super irritable. It was making me hard to sleep. And I, just one day I was like, I'm done. Threw it away. Haven't looked back. And you, you did cold Turkey. Yes. After 10 years, did you go through some pretty brutal withdrawals? None. Oh, the, wow. That's amazing. Usually with psychotropics, that's, I mean, I guess that's not as much of one as, as some of the others but still no 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 withdrawals whatsoever i uh 
the thing that was the scariest the most was going into writing again and forcing myself to write without that as my companion. Yeah. And, uh, but I eventually got over it and, you know, it took a little while, but no, I, it was really actually very easy for me just to throw in the trash and move on. Good, good. So when you do hit a creative block, um, what are some things that you do to try to, to overcome that? I have a whole list of ways to get rid of uh, writer's block because it used to affect me pretty badly. Um, but I honestly, I haven't had it. Like some days I still will go in to the studio and come out getting nothing done all day long. But it's not because of creative block. It's just because I created things that I think could be better. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing that I learned a long time ago is just get up, walk out of the studio, put your instrument down, even if for five minutes, 10 minutes, go walk outside, do something you've been meaning to do around the house, and then go back in, pick it back up, see what happens. Um, I'll hunt through Spotify sometimes looking for some inspiration just to kind of get me out of what I was doing, and I'll be listening to something, and you know, I'll be like, Ooh, maybe I should write something like that, and that'll help. And this sounds very counterproductive, but I learned this from uh, my old guitar player, Neil Tiemann, that's in Carnifex yes, yes. now. And he was telling me about how he watches movies while he writes. And while he's writing. Yeah, I, I thought that was, yeah, I thought that was very counterproductive. So I just started putting on movies that I've seen a million times and just on my laptop on my desk and I put my feet up, I got my guitar right here and I'll just noodle. It kind of, it, it takes your focus away from the guitar to the point where I think it lets your subconscious bleed out a little bit and I'll come up with something. It'll, it'll catch my ear and then I'll hit pause on the movie and get to work. And you know, if I hit another block, then I turn the movie on and I just sit there and noodle for a little while. That and... actually makes sense. That because then it's it's not that pressure, you know. And of all the things that I've mentioned, that one works the best. What are some of the movies that you that have been your I call them comfort movies that you felt like you've been able to create a lot from? Uh um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was definitely probably really. Over. I'll repeat a lot of that's one of my favorite movies now. I couldn't. Um, I, I couldn't get through it. I had a panic attack at the end. <laughs> I think I, I laughed my ass off at the end. I saw it in the theater and I was just so oh. in shock. I just started laughing. Oh gosh! But yeah, I had I, to leave. I I still haven't finished. It. I should go back and do it now because my anxiety is not as bad. But I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> but other than that, that movies like The Abyss. I think is is probably on there. The Abyss? The Abyss was so good. The original? Yeah. Oh, so good. And I can't think of any others, but I, you know, I've got I just kind of search through. So it has to be something I've seen before. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I'll might throw on a documentary here yeah. and there, but it's usually just a what I, I call a comfort movie. Mm -hmm. You know, just something to have on the background to I don't know what it does to my brain, but it just jars something in there. And um, focusing too hard on something is not good. Yep. And sometimes it can be, but sometimes it could work against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when you're trying trying to create, um, it's yeah, it's just like a weird kind of pressure. And so it makes sense that something that gives your brain a break, because comfort movies I think do kind of give your brain a break because it's it's something that you have seen enough that there's not that like anticipation or intensity you know mm -hmm. so you're able to be comfortable enough to to yeah let your subconscious come through that's interesting mm -hmm. yeah hm. i talked to nail uh with uh dealing with demons one and he was he was a lot of fun to talk to yeah, seems it, like a cool guy yeah i love neil he's great yeah that's cool um i want to hear about the hate ballet because that <laughs> one's lyrics is intense. 
a little too deep to talk about that's the okay. meaning behind that one but that that song was completely different mm. and i'm for fun i might release the demo to that song in the future um well into the future because it was a completely different song. It was called, um, I think it was called Through the Ashtray originally. And I just wasn't feeling it. Mm-hmm. And I recorded song. That was the one song that I tracked vocals with Steve Evans. I went down to his studio and it was the first song that I started tracking outside of, you know, baby dolls, but real, like tracking for real, like not demo style, like doing the actual vo- uh, vocals. And unfortunately, shortly after that, Steve Evans had to move to the East Coast. So we weren't able to finish and there was nobody else in town that I wanted to do my vocals with. You know, he had worked on three Devil Driver records at that point and I was really comfortable with him. And so I decided to do it myself in in my studio. And I just wasn't happy with it. But Austin had already played the drums on it. I didn't want to just throw it away. So I just completely rewrote the song, except for one little part that I kept. So did he come through and re retract drums or did you keep the same? I just kept the drums you, and I just completely rewrote just the song the to what he did. Yeah. Wow. So, and I was really happy with it when cool I got song. done with it. And, um, rewriting it was definitely the right way to go yeah it's a cool song um I I like all of them um but that one is is a little bit different I don't know for sure I'm trying to think of what makes it what makes it different for me but yeah it's a cool song thank you glad you like it (laughs) well I like all of them and usually when I listen to an album, there'll be, I think, I think, um, Dirty Cigarettes was the one that, that stuck for the first little bit that I would like find myself, you know, like playing in my head. Um, but then usually when I listen more and more to an album, like another one will, will pop up and I'll be like, no, I think that's the one that's my favorite. I can't pick a favorite. It's, it's just, it's really, really well done, man. I, I am just, I I don't want to say surprise because I didn't know what to expect, but um, it's it, initially it felt like like a warm hug from the '90s, but then it like evolved into a whole different thing. And every time I listen, I feel like I hear something different. And I, I love albums like that because it it keeps me. It's like it's like that comfort movie, but yet there's still those um, you know, like when you watch the same movie over and over and over, and you're like, I've never noticed that part before. Like, how have I watched this fifty times and haven't noticed that part? You know, that's what like, it feels like. Like Interstellar, <laughs> which was actually now oh, that I gosh. like I think about it, that was another record that um, or another movie that I probably watched a lot when I was working uh, writing for this record that's a good one anytime that there's uh movies that deal with like time lapses man it's a it's a it's a mind fuck yeah i'm really into space stuff and that's yeah, how i came sure. up with the name Verona on venus i was just watching oh, youtube YouTube. videos about the russian probes that uh were sent to venus in i think they started in the 70s and leaked into the 80s there was like third. I think there are maybe 15 probes or something crazy like that that they sent to Venus. And they were called Venera. Mm. That's so originally I was going to call the band uh, Venera on Venus, but it's, I just, Venera didn't sound right to me. And I eventually came up with Verona. I don't remember how. And I'm actually really glad that I changed it to Verona because Monkey from Corn just released his solo project and it's called Venera. Oh my gosh. That would have been a trip. Yeah. I, I would have been like, yeah Damn and it. everybody would have been like oh Making the cares so and so copied so and so and they probably vice versa um, which is not really a big huge deal but i always go back to this for an example you know you don't want people going in you don't want to paint a picture too much of a picture for somebody before they go in and listen to something or see your art mm-hmm. and a, a great example of this is you know patrick stewart from star trek Mm-hmm. Captain Picard originally did the intro for Nightmare Before Christmas. 
and you can like get his voice yes he, just I the intro the intro um because if you go and listen to the soundtrack he's on that one but for the mm-hmm. movie they got a different guy and the story is when tim burton was doing testing on the movie uh he started noticing people in the audience talking to whoever they were with like mm-hmm. oh that's that's you know because star trek was really popular at the time mm-hmm. and they notice people getting distracted so much by his iconic voice even though he did a fantastic job they had to swap it out because everyone started thinking star trek right which is definitely not the same feel no it's like you don't want people thinking about star trek when you're going into nightmare before christmas so i that was one of the coolest lessons i think i'd ever learned about art when and I tell that story all the time to people, you know, people that I'm recording, people that I'm working with, um, other band members, and it relates to so many things. Yeah. So you don't want to have people have expectations and that makes sense. And I don't think, I mean, in this one, obviously I didn't have expectations because I was so, so shocked by it all. Um, you have nine songs now, the, the, um order that i've been able to listen to it in is that the actual order does it, it start should, with rodent it should be yeah it goes rodent dead heroes hang floods of burden the hate ballet red dead rose popular delusions monarch acid test and then the bones of baby dolls i think that's how it was there might have been a a couple earlier in there that might have been flipped but um i think that's pretty close to how I've been able to listen to it um sorry I derailed myself <laughs> <laughs> that happens. with us yeah, oh, too often too often I I don't know I'm a therapist and my poor clients half the time are probably like oh my gosh I should we should be, have these rules these roles swapped <laughs> gosh um you said you really like sci-fi related things uh is the abyss your the abyss your favorite would you say Sci-fi movie, it's definitely up there for sure. And I really like that movie. I won't get too far into it, but there was a brief period in my life where I was thinking about becoming an underwater welder. Oh, I have a friend that does that in California, yeah. actually, weirdly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really like that movie. It's, but there's just not a lot of good sci-fi movies out there. I think there's a lot of bad sci-fi movies yeah. out there. So when I find a good one, I really like it. And it's definitely my favorite genre of movie is is sci-fi. Yeah. But I, like... I, I wouldn't call myself really a movie buff. I watch, yeah. I watch a lot of movies, but I don't feel as passionately about them as I do about music. Oh, of course. Of course, yeah. I Well, I guess there probably are a lot of people that do, but music is a whole other, a whole other craft um i really like sphere have you ever seen sphere <laughs> i don't think i've seen that one. Oh, you should watch that one it's really good it's based off a michael Crichton book um but it's a it's a pretty intense one it's got I, samuel l jackson and dustin hoffman god and- i yeah you know what i'll put that on my list i my first job when i was in santa barbara was working at a video store and i remember there's a lot of times that's one of the covers that just sticks out in my mind that i never watch so yeah i'll check that one out I've never seen it. I don't think I've seen it, but a lot of times I'll get into a movie and be like, okay. I'll oh yeah, yeah. Before. I would yeah. be surprised if you didn't, because it's a, I, it's a fairly big one. I okay. mean, I don't think I have though, but oh, I guess that means to... I, just, even if I have, I guess I need to watch it again. Yeah, it's a good one. You'll have to let me know what you think afterwards. Um, well, yeah, well, I'm sure you are, like you said, super busy with a lot of this, uh a lot of the stuff right now because it's coming out here soon uh well yeah it's absolutely incredible really really i i can't stop listening to it i i would not be surprised if it is very high if not the highest on my list for for my top next year i really i'm really enjoying it that much and that's it takes a really special album again to to make me want to write about it um just because I don't have the time and and this is one that I'm I'm feeling that I I want to with that makes me so happy to hear well I, it's I did not I don't I didn't have any expectations um 
I'm not one of those people that I'm like, okay, everyone's going to like this stuff. You know, I've always been the type, you know, well, some people might like it. It's not going to be for everybody, but I hope a majority of people out there like it. And so far the, the, the response has been extremely positive. I'm very happy. And, you know, I've only released one song. I got another song coming out on Friday. Okay, cool. Um, hoping to have the video out shortly after. Awesome. And then whole album's out January 19th. And shortly after that, I will be releasing a couple more singles. Oh, re- for, um, for the future. You're already yes. going to do them that quick. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Ooh, I'll be looking forward to it. Yeah, you should You should definitely be very, very proud of yourself. I know it's been a, a long time in the making, but it's it's super well done. I, I, I don't know if you know this, but I listen to a lot of music and a lot of very different styles of music. I would imagine uh, you do. And so it's it's kind of hard. I don't want to say to impress me because I enjoy a lot of different kind of kinds of of music. I mean, we talked about the Dead South last time. I enjoy, you know, bluegrass. I enjoy all different types and of course enjoy a lot of different types of metal. But it's kind of hard to I don't want to say impress me because I don't think that that's really the accurate word, but that's the only word I can think of right now. I know to what where you I want to it's, listen it's, to something over and over and over. That's it doesn't difficult. happen to me very often either. And, yeah. you know, the Dead South is one of those bands that's come around and recently into my life that, you know, still to this day, I just I can listen to them on repeat all the time. Mm-hmm. If it, it seems like it, it happened more when I was in my teenage years or oh, in my 20s. Sure. But I think as time goes on and, you know, getting older, there's you know and and also the music industry is so oversaturated with musicians mm-hmm. these days because it's so much easier to record it's easy to re- promote yourself that there's a lot of material out there to sort through until you can find something that you really like yep exactly exactly so yeah when, and because of that um it's easy to listen to something going oh i like that or oh that was a cool song and then that'd be the last time you ever listen to it. And so, yeah, to have something that you genuinely want to listen to over and over is, is pretty freaking awesome. Cause it's, it's a rarity these days. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time. And I'm really excited to see how everybody responds once it's fully, fully out there. Thank you, Nika. I appreciate everything. For sure. Glad, for sure. glad you liked the record. Love it. There's no like there. I definitely, definitely really, really, really love it. <laughs> awesome have a good rest of your day and um tell elon i said hello (laughs) (laughs) okay thank you very much have a good one (laughs) bye